Howdy folks, this is Jackers, and this, well, this is Subnautica Below Zero. We've taken a look at this in the past, but someone asked me about it again, so I thought we might take another look. I've tried to stream it, that didn't necessarily work too well, so we're going to do this as videos on YouTube. So, let's go ahead and press play. We will start a new game, and... We will do survival, but not hardcore. So we have to eat and drink and keep an eye on our oxygen. But other than that, we should be okay. And pressing anybody button to continue. Unknown Worlds Entertainment presents... I repeat, immediate evacuation of Sector Zero to Space Station Vespa. Sam, what's happening? The meteor storm. There was interference. It's closer than they thought. How long? Maybe ten minutes. Jeff, do you read? Rebin tweeted it. I translated the wake-up command. Your timing sucks. We're evacuating. <laughs> Jeff! His last GPS check-in was at the cave entrance. I'm going up there. Roger that. Don't stay any longer than you need to. Alrighty. We'll work on that. And Altera PDA, we will grab that. And let's see, we would look at that by doing this, and we can look at Robin Goodall, Vesper Security Interview Interviewer. Why have you applied for this role, Robin? Everyone's talking about 4546B. Who hasn't applied? Well, maybe Jeff. Interviewer. No, he signed on last week. Why this assignment? Robin. The last time we found a sentient alien life was Strader 6, 17 years ago. It's been fun, but frankly, I'm bored, and you have telepathic squid. Interviewer, I should tell you that rumors about spacefaring aliens on the planet are rumors. If that's why you're here, you'll be disappointed. Robin, I'm a xenolinguist. Spacefaring aliens are our holy grail. I want it, but I don't expect to get it. Interviewer, what qualifies you for this position? Robin, there are aliens out there you couldn't imagine, let alone understand. Do you know how to talk to them? Interviewer, I think you correlate responses against stimuli and... I do what they do. Feel what they feel. If they bathe in liquid nitrogen and talk with their feet, I put on a spacesuit and I pull a handstand. But this recruitment process? This is the most alien of all. But I'm trying to correlate my responses here. Interviewer, thank you, Robin. Sandra? Sandra? Sandra will show you out. Sandra? Alrighty. And there is a critter. And there are more critters. Alright. So, I believe this has changed since the last time we took a look. Even perhaps since the last time I took a look. There is still some placeholder art. But... This is early access, so you may notice things aren't quite as they will be, as I said, placeholder art, um, maybe some performance issues, but I'm seeing sort of screen tearing, which is new and unusual, but hey, what are you going to do? All right, let's pop this open, head outside. We have to go find a Jeff, who's apparently been out doing Jeff things. Alrighty. And that, I believe, is the eye in the sky, the space station whence all these folk have come. Oh, we could at least close the door. Let's be polite. There we go. And we can't play with that. There are these cool mechs, but they're coated in icicles and, I believe, broken. So what is this? This is a survival game, an underwater survival game. 
a sequel to, of course, Subnautica. Um, this one, I think, is a bit more mm, fleshed out, but we'll see. Snowman, I don't want to destroy the snowman, so we shall let him live. All right. Well, I suppose there's nothing to it but to do it. Let's go find a Jeff. Ooh, wait, what's this? Hang on, shiny thing. This do appear to be a vehicle, perhaps of the space sort, perhaps designed by Apple. All right. Ah, the warm flowers. Mmm, warm. So one of the other aspects of Subnautica Below Zero is, of course, the Below Zero aspect, the cold. So things like flowers that warm you up, kind of handy. We are playing Robin. who, as we saw, is a xenolinguist and pretty epic. I'm approaching the research site. It looks like Jeff's GPS track is here, but no other sign of him. Understood. Be careful. Is that what this is? I'm guessing that's flashing for a reason. Maybe we can't interact with it yet. The one who made Jeff gone, I'm guessing. Ah, I seem to recall there being this excellent coffee machine. I don't know if we even have access to our inventory yet, but I'm pretty sure we can pick up coffee. Let's check. Coffee is kind of handy. Well, it's taken forever. Oh, we did get a cup of coffee. We do have access to inventory. Coffee will subtract from H2O. It'll make you thirsty, but it will gain you 50 body heat. Very handy. So we're going to press this no matter what we're doing here as we get what more. Here? What, classified? Okay, we got it. Coffee, we'll get another one. We woke something up. I spoke to it. Please, get to the escape ship. I'm on my way. Okay, and... Alien Research Site Zero. Okay, that is a lot of text. So I will say if you want to read it, I will uh, offer you to pause here. And release, and then we'll scroll down a little bit. In case something wasn't quite there, that last sentence. Okay, and we are off to procure another cup of coffee. I don't think we can get too far from it. We've got three. Let's wait for that fourth one. They will stay warm in our inventory. Let's call it future inventory tech. And you know what? I don't know how far we can get away, but we'll see if we get five. In Subnautica, the first one, you could go pretty far and it would still throw a cup of coffee at you. Maybe it came over Wi-Fi. I'm not sure, but... Okay, we're not going that way. Alright, let's get a move on. We have only four cups of coffee. We're not going to stick around for five. Okay, one quick thing. Let's see if we get close, if it will deliver it to us. The answer is no, so we're gone. And if you're interested in Subnautica Below Zero, if you want to see more, let me know. 
your comments make a big difference as to whether or not I do more. So don't be bashful if you want to see more. If you are, I may not do it. If you're not bashful, though, I might just. Um, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I'm just trying to guess what folks want. And sometimes I guess wrong. Um, um, that's a, that's a lot of drop right there. I don't actually recall this drop, honestly. I thought we kind of went straight over there, but maybe not. Or at least maybe not anymore. Let's go this way. I kind of remember this. Yeah, maybe I'm just remembering incorrectly. No, we're not going up there that way. And we're about to get to the core of the game. Oh my. Oh no. Are you back at base yet? Well, That's a negative. it came to meet me. It's gone. All right, well, I guess we can try and make for that ladder over there. And welcome to the core part of the game. On the bottom left, we have food. Well, we have health, food, water, and oxygen is the big one. So we're about halfway to hungry, a little bit thirsty, and we're running low on the airs. And let's shoot for here. Okay. Well, we got some oxygen. We've got 45 seconds. And, well, apparently interstellar artillery. I copy. I'm okay. Ish. We're, we're going to catch some fish as we go. different varieties okay surface every so often for some air okay what do we got coming down here I think this might be our emergency shelter and we've got these cute little critters running about Sort of penguin-like? Penglings, they might be? There are two different creatures that are kind of similar to me. Um, ooh, and we've, of course, got minerals and things to build with. We'll collect some as we go. Wow, that is a lot closer than it used to be. I mean, to where we started. Ooh, there is a boom. Whoopsie! There is a lot less oxygen in the tank than I thought. Okay, going for that boomerang fish. Okay, yes, yes, yes. And another one of these. Basically, we're going grocery shopping right now. Uh-huh. And now we should find that shelter. Okay, there it is. And grab a few more things while we're out. And hop on in to base. Welcome to our emergency shelter. Huzzah! This life pod will help you survive until rescue. Fabricate food and tools and refer to your PDA's data bank for more information. Good oh. luck. Well, thanks. Okay, so we have 
things to make water, which is the bladder fish. And we should do that. These waters, as you'll notice, they are filtered using an all organic membrane, non vegetarian, which means they're not entirely exactly safe either. But they're better than nothing. And we can cook some fishies up, some boomerang. Arctic peeper actually. Uh, cooked fish won't stay good for very long, so it's better to eat them as you make them. You can store uncooked fish for quite a while. So let's make our Arctic peeper here. And different fish provide different uh, resource benefits, let's say. So here we're going to get 32 food and 5 H2O. So our water is giving us 20 H2O. Coffee's taking some away. And if we ate the uncooked hoop fish, we would get plus four food and minus one H2O. What we need now, we'll eat our peeper, and we're probably okay to go without the water right now. Let's open our storage, put our other fish in, maybe a couple of waters and a couple, three coffees. And here is the titanium we picked up. Now we want to make some things so that our lives are easier. An O2 tank would be nice. Fiber mesh, to make fiber mesh, we need to go up into resources and basic materials and we need creep vine samples. To get samples, we will need a tool, that being a survival knife, which we have the titanium, we need silicone rubber back to resources. Silicone rubber is creep vine seed clusters. So we need to go find us some creep vine. And so long as things haven't moved around too much, unless I just got really far ahead of myself, but I don't think I did. Uh, let's grab some resources here while I'm seeing them and thinking about it. Come up for some air. And down out of the blizzard. There's some quartz, handy for glass, and of course other things. Another hoop fish will let you go. Bladder fish I tend to grab because you go through a lot more water than food. But I think you can overfish, so you have to be a little careful. Um Let's keep an eye out. There's an emergency cache. All right, there is. These are the twisting bridges. There's our shelter. There is a sound I don't really want to run into. I don't think. Let's grab some bladder fish while we're here. That's the water. Okay. Um, ah, creep vine. There we go. Okay, these little critters here, uh, they're, I think, sea monkeys? Yeah. Gotta be a little careful. If you pull out a tool while you are near one, he will steal the tool and run away with it. All right, this is definitely creep vine. I don't see any clusters, though. They show up like red, like this. No, that's a bladder fish. That's from mimicking. Oh, oh. 12 seconds. Up, up, up. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we are up, we are back down, and I am still not seeing creep vine clusters. Uh, they weren't overwhelmingly common, but they weren't exactly scarce either. These are handy for making batteries, so we're gonna grab these while I'm here and thinking about it. Mm-hmm, up, up, up. Which is, so everything we're doing right now is to try and get to more oxygen. All right, let's try and follow the creep vine from above. That looks like a bigger cluster. There we go. See the red? That's what we're looking for. Okay, we can pick these by hand. 
So we will. All right, now. Let's get up and spot our shelter and back down. It's a little just generally easier to travel underwater so long as you keep an eye on your oxygen. Ski guide fragment, that'll come in handy once we have a way to scan things. Grab some more quartz because it's on our way. Another bit of titanium. So you can build, ooh, lead, quartz. You can build some rather elaborate structures, like you can build some really cool submarine bases. And actually, I meant submarine just underwater, but you can actually build pretty cool submarine bases as well. Um, let's hit the base and use our fabricator and create some silicone rubber. Which will give us our knife. Okay, and let's swap the knife with the fishy. And, well, all right. Use our fabricator again. So another silicone rubber will give us better flippers. Fins. All right, and let's step away and... So the creep vine clusters take up more inventory space. We want equipped. Oh, they went right on, so there's our flippers. Um... Mm -hmm. Tools, scanner, we would like to build that. Can we build a battery? We can, because we picked up the ribbon plants and we have the copper. Food's lasting pleasantly long, I like that. Now that we have that, we can build our scanner. This is the thing the sea monkeys are most likely to steal from you, because it's the thing you're most likely to have constantly out. Um, okay, let's try and get the bladder fish off our... There. We don't really need him in inventory. You can feed some of the other creatures, like the penguins, I believe, and try and convince them to be your companions, but we're not really in that mode at the moment. We are more in let's survive and not die mode. You can also eat the bladder fish that make water, but there are plenty of other fish that provide food and very few other fish that provide this level of water, if any. Um, lubricant and glass. I don't know if we need any of that offhand, so we open our storage Let's put the creep vine clusters back in. We won't need them offhand. We can put some water in. We'll hang on to three this time. Put the ribbon plant in. I don't know if these can get old. I think these can, which hmm, it might behoove us to. One part of the creep vine can. I don't know if it's the cluster or the sample. Uh, let's go out and grab ourselves some. So we should move a little faster with our new fins. So the way our scanner works is we can, theoretically, scan a critter as long as we keep him in our... Come on, come on. Okay, so it's sort of like a shooter, except you're not actually killing them, you're just gaining information on them. Kind of a neat way, a neat spin on the uh, theory. Go ahead and put the scanner away, head back up to the surface and back down under the water and get ourselves some copper. And creep vine cluster. No, we want a sample. Ooh, and a boomerang. Boomerangs is good eating. All right, yep. Why don't you go away? This is the other creature. Oh, and a sea monkey. See, he's gonna come right at us. We put the thing away and he loses interest. I was trying to get this guy. He's kind of cool. Um, oh, we need air. Air is up and we are going down. All we need to do to get the sample is smack 
the creep vine a couple times, put the knife away before the sea monkey comes to steal it from us. And we are off. Like a school of Robin. All right. And our oxygen will replenish once we step back inside the base. And now we need a fiber mesh. We come up to basic materials, build our fiber mesh. And an O2 tank. There are many upgrades to the O2 tank. This is just the first one gives us 75 seconds. As for tools, we could build a repair tool, but we don't really have anything we overwhelmingly need to repair at the moment. Mm. We do have our cooked boomerang, or a boomerang we can cook. You can also cure food to last longer. I think you have to do that before you cook it. I'm not entirely sure. You do need salt for it. Either way, we can have our boomerang snack and a bit of water. See, water goes down quick and you don't get very much out of a bottle, which I kind of still would prefer a little bit more. Either more water per bottle or a little less burning it up. But... Okay, and there's an arctic peeper. Let's see if we can scan him. You can get recipes and, of course, just learn things in general about the critters from scanning. Let's put our scanner away before someone comes to lift it. We saw a sea glide fragment. If we can track that down, we should be able to scan it. And what'll happen is that'll give us probably like one third of a blueprint to build it. And what it is, is like a little motor with a propeller that you can hold in front of you to tug you along underwater. Make everything go just a little bit faster for the cost of batteries. Yeah. Alien sanctuary site. Twisty bridges. 200 meters depth. Recorded to data bank. That's good. All right, we are not quite gonna go after the alien noises yet. Um, let's get ourselves some more technology. So there is a cache, an emergency supply cache over there. It might be worth hitting that. We are getting along in time, though, so we may want to... Ooh, there's... I think they're called whole fish? And you can replenish oxygen from them, but they have little parasite critters that hang out with them. Those red fish right there, they're really nasty. They'll kind of peck at you hard. Thank you so much, little fish. I really needed to be frozen. Um, we could stop being frozen any time now. On the plus side, we're not using oxygen. Oh, goody. Okay, let's get out of here. Well, there we've got some salt and some quartz. Try and stay away from the thing with the barrel on the front that freezes us with its ray gun. More creep vine. Up for air. Fully replenished. Let's go check our supply cache. There's a chest here. Crack that open. We get a nutrient block, which is a significant amount of food. There is a beacon. Ooh, we could take that. That's new. All right. Um, First aid kit. Sure. You don't need to have it in your hand, though. Thanks for offering. Um, a flare. You don't need to have that in your hand either at this particular moment. Disinfected water, which is awesome. Um, I'm going to leave this beacon here right now because it will be... A, a way for me to recognize, you know, this direction from our base as opposed to, well, any other direction from our base. Let's try and get back in the vicinity. Oh, here's a sea glide fragment. We'll scan this quick. 
Okay, put that away. We have one third of progress to get our sea glide. And back up for some air, back down. It is a beautiful game. It is a beautiful world. Of course, it is hazardous in places. And uh, let's put that away. We're just going grocery shopping, guys. We're not necessarily needing to bat people around with fish. Quartz. But as I said, beautiful game. It can be very relaxing. You generally will know when it's not going to be, so if you're having a, a moment where you don't really want to be in a stressful position, you can kind of, once you're further in the game, just build your base to your heart's content. Kind of chill out. Swim. Look at the pretty colors. Listen to the pretty music. Good stuff. All right. I still haven't spotted that sea glide fragment we saw earlier, but that's okay. We'll come across it. So this is Subnautica Below Zero. And as I said, it's still in early access on Steam. It may be in other places. I just don't know. Um... There's a little colony of penguins, I think. Maybe we can go visit them. Say hi to the neighbors. Got the bobbies. And the biggins. Oh, Bobby just kind of keeled over there. And yeah. Somewhere in the sky is the uh, space station. Oh, it looks like it took some damage. I don't know if they've done it yet, but they are working on a, a rewrite to the story. It does have a story. And uh, I've been as far as it has gone in the past. I don't know if I've been to as far as it is right now, but uh, as I said, they're going through a major rewrite, so we'll see how that all turns out. So let me know if you'd like to see some more of Subnautica Below Zero. And I would like to say thank you so much for joining me as we swim about this new and alien waterscape. I hope you found it entertaining and maybe even just a little bit informative. I would like to invite you to think of something that makes you truly happy. Something, something that brings you joy. And I'd like to honestly tell you thank you so much for watching again because, you know... Having a purpose and being able to share things like this with you, that, that brings me joy. And I'm truly grateful that you allow me to share, share some of your time. I'd also like to invite joy and happiness into your lives. And most of all, ask you to please, please take care.